Right. There you are. Pygmy sloth. Hard earned pygmy sloth. But look at this guy. Look at the green in his fur. This is the uh, kind of textbook thing about sloths that you'll always read about, which is this algae in their fur. So, what were Buffon's first impressions of a sloth? We should speak more of wretchedness. I'm presuming he must be referring to the algae. Is it in every sloth, this stuff? Not every sloth has sloth algae, but they all have specially developed hair that allows algae to live in the hair. So they actually have roofs or fissures in the hair, and the algae live in those fissures. So, is this algae only found on sloths? Because that's the big, I guess that's the big question. Is it not just a slightly mouldy animal that spends all its time in the trees? As far as we know, we've never been able to find this algae anywhere but on the back of a sloth. And what's really cool is the two-toed and three-toed sloths both have algae, but they have different species of algae only found on their fur. We've never found it in a plant or in a tree or anywhere else in the wild. Wow, look at you. I can't believe I'm holding possibly the rarest animal on Earth. Look at that. You kind of feel sorry for it, don't you? Just, just for being a sloth, if nothing else. This, this whole way of being is what is, makes them particularly peculiar to me. So we've got a belly, which is a quarter to a third of its body weight. The portly Comte de Buffon claimed the sloth had a defect in its constitution. It seems he was wrong again. So a lot of its body mass is put aside for digesting. The trees in the forest, the leaves, they're everywhere. Most of them are nasty, most of them are fairly leathery, most of them are full of toxins. Our sloth, by being a, a walking fermentation tank, has specialised itself to such an extent it's had to compromise all the other things. It's not a solid, feisty animal. It feels kind of flimsy. And that's possibly because only a quarter of its body weight is muscle. Now, muscle is very expensive. If you've got a lot of muscle, you use up a lot of energy. And also, it's incredibly heavy. So if you're in a boreal animal like a sloth, it means that uh, you're not going to be able to get to the thin twigs at the ends of the branches very easily if you're heavy. So that's why it is so slow and steady and deliberate and seemingly indolent with its, uh, its movements. It's because it simply can't go fast. It doesn't have the muscles to power it. So for lots of reasons, this animal has pretty much given up muscle in order to be able to eat otherwise nutritionally poor food. But that's what it's doing. It's exploiting a resource. It's what it's so good at. Buffon, you haven't got a badly turned leg to stand on. There's so much to say about this creature. I can't believe Buffon ever even handled one. Let's, um, how do you turn a sloth around when they're getting attached to your head? Oh, it's real short hair. Yeah. And it's orangey. And then the orange will change in variation between sloths. But that's the actual oil. And you can actually smell it a little bit. It's almost like a I can't believe cologne. I'm sniffing the rarest mammal on Earth. I don't know what cologne you wear, but that... Oh, blimey. Yeah, it's musty, but I've never sniffed the rest of a sloth, so I can only take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just the most bizarre animal. We've seen our three-toed sloth on the mainland. How does this differ, really? First off, they're about 40% the size of a normal three-toed sloth on the mainland. But if you look at its face, the markings are a lot brighter. Its eye markings, it's almost like it's wearing a mask. And it has this sort of cap look right behind its ears, yeah. where it looks like it's wearing somewhat of a, like a hat. And when they first found the sloth, they called it the monk sloth, because it looks like a monk. It looks like it's wearing the typical monk headwear. They have the most variable and the lowest body temperature of any mammal on Earth. And some think, because they're so dependent on the ambient temperature, if the temperature drops enough, they simply stop working. So they don't digest, so they go dormant effectively and can't start digesting until they warm up which also explains why they are so sluggish. All these things all played together mean that that sloth, that animal that we all kind of love to laugh at, is actually a serious bit of survival kit. By being as slow as possible, by reducing your muscle mass, by increasing your digestive system, you have pretty much got a creature perfect for making the most of probably the most plentiful resource in the forest, or in this case, the mangrove and that's leaves. We've only got to know these relatively recently. 2001, this animal was, was described to science. And in the meantime, very few people, well, other than Bryson, has really been here, haven't you? So it's, uh, it's really a whole story that needs to be unraveled. I love them. Seriously love them. Probably fair, fair enough to put you back, isn't it? 
And now the time has come to say goodbye to this rare and incredibly weird creature as it disappears into... That's the slowest animal release I've ever done. <laughs> One of maybe a hundred of its kind. That's 1% of the population of this species. Then the icing on the cake for me. At last, our cameraman nails a shot of that elusive yes. Escudo hummingbird. I can tell you for nothing that this is what some people refer to as the Escudo hummingbird, an endemic species to this island. The less convinced just call it a slightly bigger rufous-tailed hummingbird. Now, fortunately, they're fairly varied in their habitat selection as far as hummingbirds go. So it's probably got a better future ahead of it than our sloth. So far in this program, I've seen two pygmy sloths and Bryson spotted the third. It's a great success for my quest, but a sobering thought that these represent 3% of the world's pygmy sloth population. Think about it this way. If I threw a party for the same percentage of the standard three-toed sloths, I'd be hanging out with way over 100,000 animals. The pygmy party, in comparison, would be pathetic, with just three guests, which is what makes this last encounter all the more poignant for me. Before we let this lady go about her business, one thing I've learned is that whether you're a three-toed sloth, a two-toed sloth, or this, the incredibly rare pygmy three-toed sloth, you are a very weird creature indeed. It's a mind-blowing creature, really. This pot-bellied guru of the rainforest canopy is not that miscreant that uh, Buffon described, but an absolute specialist of a weird creature.